desert California, still for at least another couple days. With me, you know him as the czar of the virtual background, the one and only Pro GK Academy, Omar Zini. And uh, Omar, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm uh, I'm just a little bit nicer than I usually do. I, I noticed. I noticed. Yes. He told me you're going to give me a reason as to why. So I'm, I'm anxiously waiting. And the, re the reason I'm just nicely is because, guys, our next guest right here is one of the most cosmopolitan cities in the world. And I figured I had to try to match the style of the city. We've got <laughs> Union Berlin goalkeeper coach Michael Sperning. Uh, Michael, man, I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying my best. Usually it's just a, a warm up suit or a t shirt or something. And I said, hey, I figured I could uh, make it a little bit nicer for uh, you. What do you got? Berlinites? How, how, do you, how do you pronounce somebody who lives in Berlin? Berliner? Berliner, yeah. Berliner, that's right. okay. Yeah. Okay, that sounds a little bit better. Um, so I'm, I'm, try I'm trying my best here, man. I, uh, I tried to do my hair, Omar. Did that work? Does it still look like I'm not going bad? Bald? Okay. No, no, not bad, not okay. bad. I mean, it gets better every time. So whatever you're using is working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I know we're not here to, uh, to talk about my hair and my jacket. Um, we are here to talk goalkeeping, guys. And uh, the reason we honestly had uh, Michael on here is uh, – very cool reasons. One is, is Michael uh, actually spent some time playing in the MLS, the Major League Soccer. I would even say, Michael, that you were kind of one of the, uh, in kind of that MLS 2.0 before, before everyone around the world really started taking notice of the league. And they said, you know, after this Austrian guy came to Seattle Sounders, like, we got to come to MLS. So I think that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's what happened there. But um. For some people out there who might not kind of be familiar with kind of your journey from MLS to Greece to Union Berlin, why don't you kind of explain, you know, how this all kind of came about? Well, uh, origin, I'm Austrian, uh, but I, I went with the age of 27 to, to Greece. Then I played there seven years or six years. And then I got the offer from Seattle Sounders to, to move to MLS. And I have to say, I have had two wonderful years there uh great success also and and, and it was uh such a life experience not just for myself also for for my family my my, my son is born in in uh, Issaquah close to Seattle so he is a, uh, American citizen as well and uh unfortunately after two years uh we didn't come to an agreement for, about the contract and uh, I moved back to to Greece uh, but I still have many friends there. Uh, I'm, I'm close with the with the organization, and uh, I really stay updated with, with of course, uh, most of the time with Domi Dutra, uh, my former goalkeeper coach, and is still goalkeeper coach in Seattle. Great guy. Uh, but I have many met many persons there where where I really wanted to stay connected and and, and uh, had a great experience. And after that. Uh, I went back to Europe one year as a player uh, in Park uh, in a very traditional cup in, in Greece, very top cup uh, in Greece, and then also spent six uh, months at, on Crete, on the island of Crete. It was from the football perspective uh, useless, but uh, the life there, <laughs> I have to tell you guys, the life was great. So. Yeah, that sounds was, awesome, was, man. Wait, you got to literally awesome. just live on a Greek island, like in a paradise and play football? Yeah, like, was, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. But but uh, unfortunately, I have to move on. <laughs> Soccer was too important in my life to, to stay there and, and just relax. And uh, <laughs> then I ended up in, in, in Germany at Schalke uh, 04, uh, when they had good times. Still good times, and uh, after two Schalke, years, Schalke to... has not won a game this year, right? Is that the situation with with Schalke um, right now? Uh, not only this year; it's in now thirty games, and they are chasing oh, wow. a record of Tasmania Berlin. Uh, oh. It's, I think, sixty year old the record, or or fifty years old record. And next game, when they play on Saturday against Hoffenheim, if they don't win this game, they equalize the score and. There are still now uh, Tasmania fans. Uh, this uh, this club is now playing in I don't know in which division, so a very low division. And and uh, but they are are claiming the the record for themselves and say, hey, it's not fair, Schalke. <laughs> this record belongs to us. And no, it, it it's of course now it sounds funny, but I have uh, still a lot of friends there, and and the, 
the situation is not not easy there, of course. Not easy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, like one of the things is like Omar. I think, uh, I think Newbold's just happy, you know, be sitting on a bench at Bayern Munich. Those are very comfortable benches that they have at at Munich. So he's like, you know what? He's like, this this might be a better situation than what I was in at uh at yeah. Schalke over there. <laughs> yeah, Alex, I mean, Alex. Alex, Alex go on. Oh, Alex is one one of a close friend of mine because when when I played at Schalke, it was the time when when he was coming uh, to our club, and the goalkeeper coach Simon Hensler said to to Ralph Fairman and myself, "I have a young guy, I have to bring it in." And uh, then he, uh, he was coming first training, and we were shooting some volleys, and he <laughs> he was catching the balls easily, and 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 Ralph and myself, we 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 take a look at each other and said, "What?" The He's really, really good keeper. <laughs> and, and in the beginning, Alex uh, Nubel didn't didn't know how good he is. And uh, I'm very happy for for him how he he moved on in his career. Of course, now he's he has to wait for his chance. But uh, he's a very good guy and and a very very good goalkeeper as well. Oh, so, Mike, so you go uh, ahead, Omar. Mike, I have a question for you. I mean, how many goalkeepers are you guys seeing? You know, obviously being. Uh, a veteran later on in your career. How many goalkeepers are you guys seeing that come through the ranks and have this, you know, big hype or like low-key hype that not many people know about that either make it or some of them that have the hype and never really, you know, prosper and make it through? It's it's a good question, of course. And and, and now the question for myself, it's even more, even more important because now as a goalkeeper coach, it's up to me in the scou scouting to, to see um, or also in our youth department to see... Uh, there is talent, okay, how, and, and, and to get an image of the keeper, um, you look at him, you see his pros, you see his cons, and you say, okay, what is the possibility that, that he, he will make it through? Or what is the, the probability? And uh, that's that's an interesting task, of course, but it's also, uh, yeah, uh, not easy because there is sometimes so small circumstances who can change a, a career if it's an injury, if it's even an injury of an opponent uh, or, or um, a, a comrade a keeper because he, he, he will get the chance there to play. And uh, of course, the development you see uh, also of the generation uh, of the players. So every, I would say, three to five years, you see a change in, in the game of, of uh, the goalkeeping. If it's like positioning, if it's like technical aspect or tactical aspect, and you see that the next generation is doing these uh, kind of stuff naturally, what have learned the generation before. So yeah. this, this is one one thing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's really funny as we're kind of kind of getting into this topic right here, Michael. One of the reasons we wanted to have you on, obviously, other than the fact that you've done some you know analysis for TV as well too, is the fact that a lot of people say. Oh, Michael Sperning, like when you watch his saves back when he played, they were not that exciting. And the reason is, is because your position hey, hey, was hey. so, hey, I'm just, I, <laughs> I, I, hey, hey, not, hey. not my you words. can stop this conversation now. <laughs> <laughs> not my words, yeah. not my words. They said, because your positioning was so good. See, I'm continuing on. Yeah. Your positioning yeah. was yeah. so good and you read the game so well that your footwork allowed you to just basically make every save within your bubble rather than have to really explode and make these incredible top. You would not have made a great Instagram goalkeeper is what I'm trying to say. You, uh, everyone would be like, wait a second, this guy is just, just making everything look easy. But in reality, you're just always in position. Um, that, that's a good thing. And your analysis is totally right. And I, I, I still would say I would, make a good Instagram goalkeeper because in <laughs> my no, no just kidding my my understanding of, of being a goalkeeper or being an excellent player is to make uh, to make tough or to solve tough tasks in the game easily to look uh, like that it's easy work and of course uh, as a goalkeeper and when we get back to the positioning it's a very 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 good topic because it all starts with the positioning and uh, for myself it was always important and and we did a lot of work with Tommy Dutra in, in, in Seattle about this uh, that with a good positioning you 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 level up your probability to, to save a ball and uh, it's all about efficiency and to be 
uh, efficient on the pitch. So uh, if you take it from the fan perspective or from the media perspective, of course, it's more better to say a hey, crazy saves. And the saves of the month at my time, uh, many times were original, started with a mistake for a keeper with bad positioning or he wasn't able to catch the ball clearly then the ball was bouncing away and then he was fro uh, jumping into the striker and made a double save and triple save and whatever so these were the saves of the month and uh, i think i won this category just twice uh, and but uh, but it was very very interesting for myself that that the, this came up this topic came up but it was also very uh, yeah, I was very thankful that the, the experts then recognized. Oh, uh, this is this is quality. He doesn't make the uh, the excellent saves for for Instagram. He 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 saves the uh, the ball in an efficient way and a cool way. So this was also the the target of, of of Tommy and myself to keep the goal against average very low and this this target reached. Yeah, you know, and I think, you know, Omar, I mean, obviously that's one of the things with your Instagram channel, obviously. See how I'm able to segue that right into uh, <laughs> back into proper Instagram channels um, is that, you know, you'll post somebody like a Michael Sperning because your audience, they want to see that a real goalkeeping educated, you know, a goalkeeper educator or a real, you know, goalkeeper who's trying to become a student of the game is looking to see not necessarily just the flashy, but they're looking to see that substance and especially prior to the play actually happening prior to that final action. Yeah, I think that's the that's the beauty of it. I mean, I, even watching someone like Ederson, for example, I did a breakdown of his where I watched a full game against Leeds early, early on in the season, and I was just fascinated by, I mean, the saves that he made in the in the in the game, but even the saves or the shots that went over the bar that were off target. He had the exact same movement, and it's just like the exact same situation, but the ball didn't end up on frame, so it didn't show up on YouTube, uh, it didn't show up on Instagram, didn't show up on statistics, but I just, you know, I, I did a talk yesterday with Todd Hofford and we're talking about, you know, how to, how to video analyze and how to watch games. And one of the points was just don't get caught ball watching. When you're watching the game, it's really easy to watch the buildup play. But then at the, as you get better with it, watch the buildup play from the goalkeeper's perspective and then watch him as he gets across the goal prior to the shot. And if it goes over the bar, just still keep analyzing his footwork, his prep set, what he does on his movement. Does he slow his body down? Does he ever get set? All those things are super important. I think uh, with Michael, to, to, your, to your point as well, is those didn't show up in the statistics, or excuse me, didn't show up on Instagram, but they showed up in the statistics because at the end of the day, you're keeping clean sheets and your goals against average. That says something about you and says something about the way you're able to command your defense to obviously, you know, problem solve for you and things that you're seeing because we're obviously in the back and we can, you know, uh, be essentially the quarterback back there and captain everybody. So I think that's to make the answer short. I think, yes, Mike, it's important to not just get caught ball watching, but watch the entire play through and you can learn a lot about a goalkeeper and why they are successful. Yeah. You it's, know, and I, very, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Oh, uh, it's a very good uh, point. What Omar w w was uh, telling uh, as well. Uh, it's not just important. The, the, the balls who are coming onto the uh, goal post. It's also important. What, what was the goalkeeper doing that he forces sometimes maybe the striker to, to, to shoot the, uh, the, uh, the ball not into the target, uh, above the target or beside the target. And if you come especially in, into one-one situations and you find the right positioning and the right time for pressure on the striker or the fall down, I think you had this topic a couple of episodes earlier, then and uh, the, the striker has the pressure to shoot and he is not able to shoot it well. Uh, and the ball is going outside of the uh, of the goal post. It's it's also for myself. I tell in the analysis to the keeper, it's like a safe for myself, definitely yeah. because he forced uh, the uh, the striker to to make an yeah shot off the goal. I love what you yeah. just said there, Michael, in regards to that because I think that's one of the real big problems in kind of getting back to this topic of goalkeeper analysis is young players when they look they break down film a lot of times they're focused on just the plays that went on frame and they're not looking at those other plays. So kind of in your mind, kind of what is the role of goalkeeper analysis, at least for you at Union Berlin? Uh, the role of the goalkeeper and analysis for, for myself as a coach, for, from the coaching perspective, of course, it's 
it's a very important tool to, to show the player or to work with the player because uh, you know the slogan pictures say more than words I can explain it 1000 times that the positioning should be there should be there I can tra draw it but then you see if you see it on video and best in the action uh, this can be a positive action or this can also be a, a negative uh, action uh, you, you can explain it way more and you especially on the professional level it's not about just explaining myself something to the player it's about to to exchange opinion and um, to, to 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 find a commitment in situations to find some rules uh, and and also for myself to explain principles to the player and for the player on the other side of course it's it's easy to understand what my words on the pitch uh really mean uh because also he gets a picture oh this is my movement this is my position oh maybe sometimes he is not aware of it uh what he is doing in, in in the field and so the first question is also myself when we watch together the the pictures to to ask uh, the goalkeeper his perspective and say hey what do you feel in this uh situation because sometimes he makes a decision and maybe the decision was right for him at that moment because he was had, had something in, in his mind but what makes totally sense what i don't know and this uh, is uh, of course the, the the tool of analysis helps a lot to to bring the opinions together to to explain principles uh, just to bring uh, our game of football forward yeah you know Omar, I, I want to say this in regards to like, I love Michael, what you were said in regards to painting the picture, because Omar, I think one of the things that in regards to with your channel, and again, I'm going to, you know, start complimenting you, it, it'll happen maybe twice, that'll be it. <laughs> we'll just, we'll keep it twice, um, is that a lot of times you have to paint the picture in order for the context of the breakdown in the post to make sense to the viewer, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the as Michael said, it's a it picture's worth a thousand words. So the way you explain it to them is one thing, but then a lot of kids, you have to understand a lot of the kids and even some coaches, maybe they don't watch the film the same way that I do. They don't watch the same film the way that you guys do. So I think, you know, as you become more exposed to coaches who uh, give you a more sophisticated approach to understanding what to look for. So, I mean, I've sat down with you know, professional coaches and I've showed them my own training sessions and then they broke it down. I, I remember talking to Chris Sharp and I showed him a video where I was explaining to the kid that I was working with the footwork and then the goalkeeper did the exact same footwork. And he said, Omar, do you realize that because you displayed that type of footwork, it may not be for them, but because you displayed it a certain way and you probably weren't doing it the perfect way, they saw it and they modeled it after you. So now you're unbeknownst to you are showing the goalkeeper the wrong technique because you were doing a lazy footwork in the, in the uh, explanation. And I said, I didn't even conceptualize that at all. Like I'm watching my own footage of my own session. And now I'm being told that I'm probably giving a goalkeeper a bad idea or a bad habit. And they're emulating what I'm doing or they're, they're doing exactly what let, I'm let, doing. So basically let's just keep you out of demos is what I'm trying to say. Just don't, <laughs> no, but don't I think do that's, that's, and that's the, that's the crazy part about it is again, when you're, that's why it's so nice to in the goalkeeping community, when you bring different coaches on and they explain things to you in ways and they expose your own, maybe downfalls as a coach or your own demos or whatever the case may be. And they explain it to you. Now I take that information. And then when I'm posting it on Instagram or YouTube, the video is one thing, but again, people get caught ball watching. They don't understand the tactical, uh, the tactical, tactical approach from the head coach. Why are they asking the goalkeeper to do this? And once you're able to learn all that and then maybe write it in text for people, now their minds can be exposed to the, the same things I was exposed to. And now they're watching video without ball watching. Now they're taking a lot of other things into account. I think that's super important. Yeah, you know, Mike, Michael, I want to ask you this because, you know, one of the problems I, I've and I've done traditional media as well, too. And I think Omar has as well, too, as when we come on as <clears throat> why am I losing my voice um, when we come on as 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 uh, pundits, you know, and we have a goalkeeping background, it's a very much of an uphill battle. I don't know if you experience the same thing, too, because a lot of times is the analysis is always done at the final action, that final play. They don't allow you to break it down all the way from the beginning and how do us as, as goalkeeper experts really help the media understand how to properly analyze a goalkeeper? Um, 
of course, it's it, it, it's it's tough uh, as a TV expert with a background of a, of a keeper to bring it close to the to the uh, to the people out there because uh, you have to keep in mind keep it as simple as possible uh, and, and 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 but bring worth or bring some important stuff into it. Don't uh, don't say just yeah he he, he kept the ball uh, very safe. You 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 can explain or as an expert or a pundit you you should explain to the people out there why this was a good save or why this was a good uh, question. But but uh, break it down to 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 simple uh, to simple things. So one of the we had also a writer, a book writer here, and uh, we were sitting together uh, last year and he was the, the whole year, the whole season, he was uh, com uh, coming with us and he brought out now a, a book. Uh, it's not just in, in German, but hopefully it will be in English as well. I will talk to him and it, it shows the inside how we work. And the, the one chapter of this book is about goalkeeping and, and uh, he was very, he, he, it was a very good feeling for myself when he came to me and he said, Michael, now after two hours talking with you and with basic information, I, I, I see the, the game differently. And this should be the target for abundance. For example, one, one, one big thing is to, 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 to bring the, the people closer that there are the three aspects of the goalkeeping, that uh, there is the, the goal defense. So this is everything what comes onto the post is uh, on, on the goal. If it's a, a shoot, if it's a header or whatever, then the solo defense, everything what the keeper is running off his line, catching crosses, uh, cleaning out of the box, uh, or, or the third part of course is, is the offensive game. So, and with this in mind, with this simple explanation of these three parts uh, is the first step is done the, that the people understand and see the next situation may be different. And they say, oh, this pass, oh, this is offensive game. Oh, catching a cross, ah, he is good in catching cross. So, and it starts up with this and then maybe you go more and more into detail. And of course, uh, you cannot explain the exact positioning to, to, to a TV um, to, 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 to somebody who is watching the game uh, the first time or, or second time. But you can bring it close, step by step closer to the game or to the... To the yeah. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Go ahead, Omar. No, no, I kind of want to exactly what Michael's saying there. I, I have a very, uh, I think during the World Cup and during like any major tournament in the last like three, four years after I started doing all my breakdowns, I have really good family friends and, you know, some of my best friends who don't know much about goalkeeping. And then obviously, because I see them all the time, I always put pressure. I'm like, did you watch the latest video? What do you think of the editing? And sometimes, you know, I ask them questions. And then finally, I think it but was- But you asked uh, them about the editing? No, I, mean, like I always wanted to, I, no, I, I said, I, I asked them about branding because I have some friends who are in the fashion industry and like, you know, that stuff. So I always ask them from that perspective. So then the first few like months, they would always give me, yeah, I liked it. I like to edit, it looks great. And then as it went along, I started noticing that they were picking up on all the little things that I was like illustrating with my breakdowns. So I had some friends who, you know, I think uh, last year, my friend's a huge, huge, huge Liverpool fan. And I think Allison conceded a goal. And he told me, he was like, oh man, Allison went down so early. He gave the striker the easiest chance. He, he, uh, he, uh, he was called, he defaulted to that, that block save. He shouldn't have done that. He should have stayed on his feet. And then that would have, you know, pushed the pass to their side. So I was just like, it, I was just fascinated because now I have people who don't know anything about goalkeeping. Wait, you see, so you like, taught Michael, you taught them about goalkeeping basically just by them helping teach, you out. I, I didn't. Yes, well, I didn't want to teach them. It just happened naturally. <laughs> they started watching it and they started noticing all the little like details about certain goalkeepers. And I think that's also a big thing too is when you watch a goalkeeper throughout a full season, you can really, really start to see the trends. And then from there, once you see the trends in their technique, is the goalkeeper coach that's working with them? Are they switching things up? So, I mean, I did a breakdown of Ederson uh, last year. If you notice the two goals against Lyon that he conceded, he was playing extremely high. He played super keeper, but he got caught extremely high. And it gave, uh, in both the goals in that game, it gave the striker the opportunity to literally just, you know, pick, pick his shot from, you know, 25 yards out. And he had that whole, you know, space in behind the goalkeeper open. So Ederson, I felt in this season, if you watch the game against Leeds, his starting position on like, there's three 1v1s in that game that he made, you know, superb saves on. He starts ex a, a lot deeper now. So now it gives the striker a lot more time to have to think about it. And it gives him more time to problem solve because now he's allowing his defenders to recover. And so when you watch that now, I'm thinking, man, okay, thank God the goalkeeper coach or even Ederson saw this. And now people who probably are watching Ederson go, oh, great save. That's amazing. But if you watch the trends and if you can actually accumulate video over the years, you start to notice which goalkeepers are, are noticing what they're good at. 
and then maybe they're not allowing those strengths to come to the, uh, the forefront of their actual game. And then the goalkeepers who watch the film with their goalkeeper coach and then go, okay, this is where you keep getting exposed. Let's drop off a little bit and let's see if we can maybe do, be more effective with more depth. And you start seeing that. And I think that's where we come in as coaches or myself as a content creator, where I'm like, I watch these games 24 seven. I watch these goalkeepers every week. Why don't I put these things together? So now you can actually see a goalkeeper's uh, development and growth over time versus just that one or two saves on the weekend. Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny, Omar, you know, if only the Bundesliga would be a little bit more comfortable, you know, with you using, using their footage, you know, you could showcase uh, <laughs> some, some, some Union Berlin stuff on, on, on your channel. But I, I do kind of want to bring it back there, there, Michael, because, uh, you know, obviously your guy's current, you know, uh, goalkeeper, you know, um, and I, I always forget how, how to pronounce it. Is it Luthe? Luthe? Luthe, Luthe how do you yeah. pronounce it? Luthe. Okay. Luthe. Um, so the thing about, the thing about Luthe is that he's, I don't want to say a lot of times they'll say on, on TV, they'll say, oh, he's kind of a throwback goalkeeper. He's more of a traditional old school goalkeeper. But I, but in reality, when I keep watching Luthe, what I see is somebody that who has clean hands, good positioning, moves their feet and doesn't spill the ball. So why what what's wrong with that? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I, yeah. I think there, 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 there is, there is a picture of Andreas uh, because he he went, he spent now I think six years in Augsburg, more or less uh, at the, on the bench. And the funny thing was uh, Augsburg every year, almost every year, the 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 ball the keeper, and in the end, Andy was coming in in the end of the season and played the games. So, but he had no one year in a row as a number one. So this was one point, of course, when 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 we decided to take him, that we have in mind, okay, uh, you you don't have to. Uh, in the history, you, you didn't see if he can make it for through a year or not. And uh, the funny thing about w what you said, it's it's there is a picture, of course, also in the media about him that he is uh, an old style keeper in the offensive game. But the reality is he's very, very good and, and calm in the offensive game, the short passes. And we changed or our game changed from many long balls last year to, to a nice build up this year or better mix this year because also of him. And uh, of course he, he has more, not, not, not the reach like, like uh, our last year goalkeeper in the, in the long balls, in kicking long balls, but you have to do the best out of it, what you have. And uh, Andy has a very, uh, has very clean hands and uh, the positioning, uh, take a look at it. Uh, it's funny because this was one thing we, we really worked on within this year and, and also, it was the day before yesterday, I got a call from a colleague in the Bundesliga and he was telling me, or we spoke about the, um, how, how the situation is and everything, blah, blah, blah. And he was telling me in the last games, you see that, that you work on the positioning. And I think Andy, he's, he's with 33, he's not the explosive one. He's not the most athletic one. But what he can have is, is a good positioning, a good reading of the game. He's a tall keeper. And if his positioning is almost clear, close to perfect, you, you can make, uh, you can have a good, very good statistic. He won't be the keeper uh, as well, who is on Instagram with nice reflexes or anything else. But of course, he, he also made one in, in uh, stoppage time against Bayern Munich. So he has also made a great save there. But he's, he's more the keeper working for the statistic and not for, let's say, for the newspaper. The, the, that's right. Yeah. I mean, and I think yeah. that's one of the reasons why you guys are in such a good position. Go ahead, Omar. No, no, I think, uh, I mean, I even looking at, uh, I mean, I, I looked up Andreas's his statistics on, uh, on Wikipedia here. And he says that, you know, in four years at Augsburg, he only played 29 games. And I think, again, when I kind of like look at those kind of players' careers, now I start to notice, for example, like Emiliano Martinez. You know, I mean, Martinez, I'm a huge Arsenal fan. So over the years, we got to see him, you know, and, and you know, be showcased in the FA Cup games or, you know, certain games that he, he was uh, featured in. But then now all of a sudden he has the opportunity to play because Leno goes down last year and he has, I mean, a spell of games, like nine games. I don't think we were, I think we lost one game. Then we won the FA Cup, beat Chelsea, and then we sell him to Aston Villa. So for me, it's just like how many, again, I asked you earlier, uh, Michael, about just how many goalkeepers do we know of who get their opportunity and then obviously don't seize it. And then the goalkeepers that who are in these systems for so long and either quit the game or they never get the opportunity and we never know what they can be. So 
I don't know. I feel like is this do you feel like Andres is like one of those goalkeepers that just, you know, you have the utmost utmost respect for him because he just weathered the storm and stuck it out even when he wasn't getting the minutes. Uh this is exactly uh yeah what 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 I totally agree and it's uh because there was one question of you earlier also with uh how objective or subjective you you sh should make the analysis and andreas if you look at him from an objective way then you have to say well he's a good keeper and he can do this if you go with all the subjective from the, the, also the pressure from outside, the media, the agent, other players who say, no, he can do this. No, he can do this. Uh, then, of course, you have really to be convinced and your analysis has to be good that you go through and, and make the decision. And uh, I think there are really a lot of possibilities. Uh, goalkeeper coaches, coaches, agents, uh, team managers, or, and even myself, don't have a picture this can work and it could possibly work and this is uh, mm. of course one fascinating thing and how to analyze also in the scouting how, if you don't see the player day by day and uh, have video scouting or uh, have to rely on statistics it's not easy to to get a good picture and and, and of course you you have to use as much uh, the combination uh, of data relevant data and facts and the picture you see and how this works, this this would be the, the most possible way or is the best, uh, most possible way to, to, to find the correct solution or the best fit for the team. And, yeah. uh, I'm very glad it worked out with Andreas. Uh, but also, it's not just Andreas, it's also the, the whole team as well or the, the whole goalkeeper team as well because also... Uh, for Loris, uh, Carius now, he, it's not an easy uh, situation, but uh, but of course he, he, he has a different type of, of gameplay and to bring this uh, qualities into the game and think about how, how this could work in our team is, is another task. And uh, yeah. even he, he was uh, with the result, we were unlucky in the, in the German Cup game, um, Loris made a good game. It wasn't easy for him. Also, he didn't play for, for, for months now. And uh, yeah, to, to, it's always work to, to bring the, the personality of the keepers together into the best way for the team. Well, I, I want to bring yeah. this up right now because we were just, uh, we were just, just talking about Luthe. I want to bring up this, uh, this save that he had against Munich because I think it's a really good one to break down. It is a flashier save. So, so we can say maybe Omar can use this on Instagram. We'll, uh, we'll, Mike, we'll talk to you, you in Berlin. Go ahead. I just want to add something that Michael said. I think, again, it's, it's that uh, when you're a pundit as well, too, and a pundit as well, and you kind of have been on the front line as a goalkeeper coach and you, you know what's going on behind closed doors, I feel like you have way more empathy. And I think when you lead with your analysis, I think you have to lead with that empathy of, you know, this goalkeeper just got his first chance in I don't know how many years now we need to we need to like instead of criticizing that one mistake or whatever the case may be, we need to give him some br the 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 breathing room to get comfortable. And then once he gets comfortable, the team gets comfortable with him. And now the whole team is playing as a unit together. Versus, I know it's so difficult sometimes because we want to. It's for the ratings or people love controversy, as you can see with like Roy Keane whenever he gives his little spiels and those kind of things. But like when you hear when you hear them, they're looking for that controversy. And sometimes I feel like yes. What I used to do is look, not controversy, but look for those big mistakes from De Gea, for example. And then I started realizing people would DM me and say, like, have a little bit more empathy for the guy, man. He's had a rough year. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I feel like I'm attacking too, too much. I'm on too much of the uh, offensive, where really I was just a goalkeeper not too long ago. I'm playing in these games. And luckily, I wasn't in the limelight. I didn't have my agent or people in the news or, you know, all that stuff. So there's a lot of empathy towards that. And I feel like if we can separate the goalkeeper, but more so from the actual action, but more so here's a learning moment and then break down the learning moment for the goal, the goalkeepers or for the fans or whoever's watching the, uh, the breakdown. I think that is how, how more people should lead the way along, along the way, along the way of analysis. But, but, but I think that has a lot and Michael and, you know, before we get to this clip or whatever, I think a lot of that has to do with how you approach the breakdown and how you paint the picture up front. If you have that empathy, you're going to come across it very differently than let's say a Roy Keane, you know, and I, I don't want to just throw Roy Keane under the bus because I'm terrified of Roy Keane. Uh, but, but you, you kind of get what I'm saying though, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And sometimes, I mean, sometimes that's where, that's where it comes in as well. But like after a while, you just kind of go, okay, you know, you've made like, I mean, for a while there, I was defending De Gea, defending him every single week. And then he, fa he started making a, literally a mistake every game. And then after those mistakes, I was just like, all right. At a certain <laughs> point, the empathy goes out the window and like the, the real statistics and the reality has to come to the forefront. And I think that that is, you know, over time it happens. And the same thing happens with, I'm sure, in, in the locker room as well. The goalkeeper coach at a certain point has to go, okay, to the head coach, look, I, I love this guy. He's having a poor run of four. We got to give somebody else a try or else the season's going to be lost for us. We got to give some, this other guy a try. And then when that new guy comes in, we also have to give them four or five, six games to get the, you know, get the, get the feet underneath them. And then once they have the feet underneath them, we can see what they're made of. And I think uh, too many coaches, in my opinion, even in, you know, football, we watch football all the time. My quarterbacks who come in at such a young age, they get cut off too soon because they don't show, you know, the winning, the winning mentality right off the bat when really maybe after that 10th game, they could have probably given you, you know, some better results. Yeah. That's uh, I mean, that, 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 that's a great point, by the way, did this come up here, right guys here, the share yeah, screen? Oh, be okay. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. So Michael, I kind of want to break this down right here because I, I would love to hear your breakdown, your analysis. And that's why we chose a very positive moment. I don't want any, don't want to have a, to have him force you to put any sort of negative stigma on anything. So um, I feel you guys saw this game it was a couple of weeks ago against uh, against Munich. This was late in the game. Obviously, this was a huge result for you guys, Michael. First off, uh, I mean, just a, a massive, massive, massive result. But uh, I think this is Coman to Sane. Look at that save, right across, boom, like that. Um, let's start from the. Uh, let's start from right here. Uh, as this is playing. And uh, Michael, why don't you break down this this play for us? Yeah, I would say, okay, uh, start the clip and then say stop. When you see the big picture, yeah, stop. Okay. Now at the moment, uh, Andy for myself, and I take this in the, in, the, in the video explanation, he is too much to the far post. Uh, because it's a crossing situation, there is not a high possibility that it, it will end up in a shoot especially in a shoot on the on the near post and if it's a crossing position he has more to be in the middle of the post and just keep more forwards backwards the movement if you know what i mean yeah so g coming off the line g getting back so if he would come closer into a cutback situation then he should push forward more to the first post but in this position he is a little bit uh, too much in the, in the near, uh, close to the near post. The position out uh, from the line, he could be maybe half a meter more uh, away from the line. But of course, he had to have in mind that it's a right-footed player now outside with an inswinger. So this should be okay. And uh, if you want to, to say something about the situation now, he, he should be more in the middle. But... There is another thing with the with the analyzation as well, uh, or the analysis. Uh, it's always good to have as much uh, as much picture as possible. So because uh, we are now this year season have possibility to have the the behind the goal camera, and we had two free situations where this situation now from from Sky Sport uh, made a wrong picture about the actual possibility uh, position. So also this, sometimes it, 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 you have to have this in mind that you don't blame him on the bad positioning if you don't see a correct camera position. Mm. You just brought up, but, just a, go ahead, Omar. No, no, I, again, we, we have uh, people who listen to the podcast. So what's, what's happening here, guys, is the ball's playing down the left side of the field. I think Bayern Munich, I forget who it was, Mike, but the ball went down the left side of the field to so the goalkeeper's right side and the attacker cut back from the left foot to his right foot. And then now he's in swinging the ball in. And Michael was telling us that he thought Andres was a little bit too close to his near post, which hopefully that paints a picture for you guys who are, who are listening. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I still, I still think, you know, obviously, so, so he was here at the, on the near post right here as that ball's coming in, he still has that great recovery step to drop, to get in position. Yep. Um, and because because of the way that the ball's angled, he has to go negative on that. And I think that's something, Michael, that I think a lot of young goalkeeper coaches need to hear because they're always focused on the goalkeeper staying positive, staying forward. But in reality, if the ball's breaking away like that, he needs to go negative in order to be able to make this save, in order to keep this ball out, right? As you already uh, mentioned correctly, at the moment when the, 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 the 
swinger uh, made to cross and Andy is making in his mind the decision not to come, it's important to to be ready for a uh, goal defense situation and to drop back to the line. With Andy, sometimes uh, I have to tell him that he is going too far back. So, <laughs> but in this situation, yeah, he, he, of course he needs the time because he's ahead of from the six yard box. So he needs the time to reaction and uh, yeah, the movement fits. He is neutral in his positioning. And then just uh, was pushing, pushing away with the with the far leg and 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 uh, bring the hand on it. And it, what you say, it's right. It's 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 also many uh, many things of the of the technical aspect. You 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 have a picture, of course, in mind what is perfect. But you you have so many uh, situations, and the game is so complex that you almost never have the perfect situation and uh, every keeper is also different and you have to accept this and now also of, of course i i'm working with professionals now who have a different background one is from denmark one is 33 years old uh, german one was also a long time in england now and there are so many different techniques and at the highest level it's just so important to make these techniques they have to make it work and make small adjustments. Of course, I have a picture in mind of the perfect technique, but I won't bring anybody to this perfect technique. And also, I would say in the in the, in the youth academy for young goalkeepers, I'm I'm not a fan that you say you have to do is exactly this way. Of course, it makes sense that when and, and we coach know why this special technique is uh, is working. And most of the times it's correct, but there can be circumstances that a young keeper uh, makes something a little bit different and it makes him special and it works out for him. And I, I really say to, to my goalkeeper coach in the youth academy, if this technique of the goalkeeper in the later development uh, doesn't, um, doesn't cut him a little bit away from, from being a professional or, or slows him down in the development, then it's okay that he is doing something, uh, things maybe a little bit different. Yeah. I, 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 go ahead, Omar. No, I think, um, again, again, people who are listening, when we were showing that clip, it was like, you know, down the left flank, cut it back, service, and then uh, Andres too close to his near post. And I think if you're watching that, again, we're talking about breaking down film. If I was a goalkeeper, I'm looking at it and going, okay, well, yes, he's too close to his near post maybe, but why did he choose that? Was it in the build-up play? Did he realize that every single runner was coming down to the near post and that's where the imminent threat was and that's why he started there? And also, too, then you start thinking about, okay, when he scanned the field, he obviously saw no one coming to the far post and maybe maybe he's already pre you know, prepping his feet, which we saw. He's prepping his feet to recover back to his line if he doesn't come to that near post. So you start thinking about, you ask so many questions as like, okay, why is he successful mm -hmm. at this uh, at this motion it does he like you know obviously coming out for balls or is his footwork faster when he goes back is he comfortable with that high approach and then dropping off like uh, uh michael was saying that he maybe drops off a little bit too, uh, too deep sometimes but some goalkeepers like to be involved in it and they drop off into that uh into that line and they make the save like we see all the time and i think even if you watch someone like uh elon melier who's at leeds united he does something very similar to this but he never actually he cheats high and that ball gets served in and he never gets back to his line quick enough to set. So again, when you start comparing and contrasting the goalkeepers as well, you start realizing Melia maybe maybe might have more success if he did maybe what Andreas did and drop faster to his line and got back there in time to get his feet set and push. So that's one thing too, is when you watch these games and you're watching these highlights, understand and ask those questions and be curious why, why, why. And then maybe you start trying those questions out on your own, uh, on your own time and on the, on the training pitch and you go, Oh, wow. Okay. I can see why he's successful with this. I can see why they're doing this. And then you start improving and adding things to your game. So I think that's one added thing to do and to look for when you watch uh, film. It, it's, uh, by the way, Ilian is, I, I like him very much as a goalkeeper, huge potential. Uh, and, but on the other side now, with coming back to the situation with Andy and uh, analyzing in general, that's the reason uh, exactly what you said uh, and what I explained earlier, that to understand also the goalkeeper's opinion about this. And most mm -hmm. of the time, the, the natural feeling of fear is bringing the, the, the goalkeepers to this habit. And to most of the time to, to bring uh, to break do uh, down this fear and, and say, Andy, no, you won't get caught. And if you got caught 100 uh, from 100 shoots one time because your positioning is high, 
okay, I take the blame on myself. And, and to, to break down this, why is he doing this? To understand this is the most important for the coach and, and to convince the player that, yeah, your fear is correct because this can happen. Uh, but with this solution, you, you uh, totally uh, raise up the probability to, 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 to catch the cross and make a, a better save and, or in general to, to be a better goalkeeper in the end. You know, yeah. by the way, what, the, the one thing I did want to say right there is like, uh, if, if I was, An if I was Andy, I would just be happy. He didn't get on Lewandowski. Cause if it was a Lewandowski, I would have had a very different, uh, ex experience <laughs> with that. My face would have just been like, well, this is pr clearly going in the net. There's really not much I can, I can do about that. Thank God it went to Sané. Uh, wow. Did I just My do shots fired at Liria <laughs> Sané? I should not do that. To, to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to be honest in, in this situation, you know, what was uh, the first thing, and that's about the human element in analyzing the first thing I was telling to Andy, when we saw the clip, what do you yeah. think I was telling him? Uh, oof. well, let's see here. Well, you obviously didn't tell him that you should, he should have been a little higher to be able to, to, to cut that off because then that would already put negative moments in his thought. You probably said great save and uh, well done. You know me now because we're talking now one hour and you know me a little bit. I also bring a little bit of toy and fun in there. And, and the first thing I would say, I, I said, yeah, congratulate, congratulations on the save. But Andy, I didn't know that you were still that quick. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to smile, and and that's the first thing, and uh, to, to to come together and say, oh, uh, and 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 it also shows that I am as a coach. Sometimes I'm, I have to say, yeah, okay, I I was not thinking that you are really able to make the save. Uh, great, great. So you proved me wrong. It's also a good thing, and and uh, I'm also a human being, yeah. and uh, of course that's also the the, uh, the first thing then and yet, then you go with a, with a smile into the analyzation and, uh, analysis and of course what, what we are talking now and uh, because uh, about the in swinger and the two close on the, on the three post this is a very very small uh, detail and we are in the positioning on, on a high level where we say okay it's all about details and uh, that's the good thing for myself as a coach. Also, when when you so you see your 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 goalkeeper next game is changing this or having this in mind, and then you can ask a question. And how did you feel? And he said, "Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good." And 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 this is uh, the the positive thing about my my work when, when I get this comment from the keeper because it's all about the keeper. We I'm just a tool, or we keeper coaches are the tool. Uh, for the keepers uh, to perform on the pitch, they have to perform. So we just can be the guys who help. Michael, I, I love I love the fact that you just brought up that human element about it because I think one of the things that Dan Abrahams, who's who's a sports psychologist that we've had on quite a few times on on the show, uh, one of the things that he always mentions is that when it comes to the world of analytics nowadays, is that they take out the human element, and they and because of that, you dehumanize the player, the footballer in the moment because you're looking at them as purely statistics. So I think it, what you're saying right there about bringing the humor in it and everything like that, you know, um, I think a lot of young goalkeeper coaches need to hear that because there's, there's so, I mean, Omar, it's not, it's not your fault. You know, it's just, you know, people like yourself <laughs> who are bringing so much of statistics and analyzation and analysis and everything like that, that they start trying to emulate you, but they forget about the fact that they're, especially with youth dealing with kids you know, and, and, and you're yeah. part of, part of their journey. You know, I will say this. Oh, sorry. Go on, Mike. Uh, um, let's, uh, sorry for interrupt. Uh, okay. I would say the, the most important thing is the connection to, for the goalkeeper. And this just can be the human element. So, so the basis is, is the connection between the goalkeeper and myself. So if this is not uh, there, if this is not given, then the analysis can be as good as uh, as 100%, but it wouldn't come in the direct way maybe to the keeper. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's not about making, uh, you just want to make it clear. It's not about making fun of the of the scenes and talk, aha, good save, good for, uh, and, and, and uh, it, it's, to bring on the human element, the, the connection that the keeper and myself, we are ready also for, for the analysis and the analysis should be subjective and uh, without any emotion. This should be just about the thing, what happened, 
what was the situation in the game, uh, how difficult was it, and uh, how how was the keeper reacting, uh, or or let's let's say it like this, the first thing, what happened in the game, what was the situation, the second thing is, uh, what was the keeper doing in the situation, and the third thing then you should end up uh, after the conversation with uh, how how. How can we improve, and how, what have we, uh, could we have done better? Sorry for this was a little bit convinced, but uh, <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, no. But, but you got the point. What was the situation? Uh, what have the keeper done, and uh, what we can do better? These three points. Yeah, Michael, please keep interrupting Omar. He's here every week. You're not. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 no, sorry. No, no, no it's okay. <laughs> feel free. I Go talk ahead, too Omar. much, anyways. <laughs> no, I think uh, just to, I mean, it's a quick story. I think it, and it helped me on a personal level. Oh helped, God, here uh, comes a story. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no, it's comfortable, good. Mike. So, <laughs> so my sister actually lives in in Thailand now, and she does a lot of like you know spiritual work there. And, and she went to a monastery, and she was telling me that one of the exercises that they do is they want you to let's say look at you know certain habits or certain things that are going on in your life that may be weighing you down. And through those habits and things that are weighing you down, understand and trace it back as far as you can as to what created that thought or what created those habits in your mind. And why did you continue to perform them every day? So I feel it, I started thinking about that as well. And, you know, it, my insecurities as a coach or certain things about why, you know, we talk about it, Mike, all the time, like, okay, I didn't play pro. So sometimes I feel like whenever I run my sessions, I have to do double the work or really try to, you know, break down and write things out, um, really deliberately oh, Omar, to, I, have, to I have a question just real quick before you do that because sure. I, 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 sure. this is in regards to the human element right here and i think my, this will michael find this fascinating honestly in your mind because you bring up a lot of times that you didn't play pro um do you feel that you didn't play pro because you told yourself you couldn't play pro or because you couldn't play pro uh i think it was a lot of things and again i mean on top of me not going pro there's like habits that i like nutrition wise there's a lot of stuff going not going to the gym not taking care of my body not icing ice baths a lot of things that i think led to me and realizing eh, this is probably not for me but i mean I, we, having conversations with you and then obviously having those conversations with my sister and and realizing that i needed to get to like the depths up to as to why i didn't have the confidence to do certain things or Maybe I didn't have the right things in place to uh, establish those day-to-day, -day, you know, habits to get myself better. So then I think when we talk about, you know, professional goalkeepers, and I think what uh, Michael was saying is that understanding why the goalkeeper does certain things and certain techniques. And we talk about, for example, maybe they start extremely high. So then you don't know this, but maybe when they were an academy player, they started, they used to start extremely deep. And then on three or four occasions, they got beat with those runners at the near post. So now we're not taking into account maybe the reason why they've been exposed in the past and why they're trying to hide that in the, uh, the present day. So I think it's extremely important too, when you're a pundit or whatever it is to look at games in the past. And like I did with Ederson, I mean, luckily for me, it happened within a three month period, but sometimes those bad habits can happen when they were an Academy player or their first two years in the league. And then they're trying to not get beat there ever again. And now they have applied a new technique that to, to us may not look good, or may not look, you know, the standard way, but because they've been able to master that because of an issue that happened in the past and it's something that they've had to kind of come to terms with, then we as a coach can kind of go, oh, okay, now I know specifically why you're applying this technique. And now as a coach, I can re-evaluate uh, the way that I approach uh, how I coach you. And I think that's extremely important in how we evaluate and reevaluate our way of coaching players. And I think that's the best way to uh, be a player's coach and really get into the mind of the players. I love what you just said right there. And Michael, you know, in regards to Andy, you know, just, just using him as an example, specifically, maybe, you know, do you have these conversations and say, you know, if you have this tendency to always drop to line and retreat every time, what happened in his past as a, either a pro or a youth player that led to this trend in him? It's, it's a very, very interesting point uh, Omar brought up because it's not about the positioning now and, and the consciousness of the movement. It's more about now what I'm thinking, the unconsciousness of, of a movement. And uh, I have this situation really now. And uh, Omar, you get the homework from myself now. You can help me to be a better Bundesliga coach. Uh, okay. Andy has a special movement. And uh, if you want to, if you have the time, analyze it, and and then we we talk about it. And and my my approach now is because it's a, a reaction move, and of course most of the times it's also tough to 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 train one one situations 
uh, or or with Andy, it's not about the one-one situation now because uh, he also showed me also with 33, you can still learn learn things, and that, that's also a good part. But with one-one situations, how many times you see, as ex example, the the goalkeeper is have the instinct and and, and turn away. And Andy also has a special movement, and uh, in my mind, it is coming up. Okay, you can train this isolated. You get improvement. You train it maybe also a little bit more in a complex way, and then it comes up to the game. A lot of pressure, a lot of stress, and it comes back to the bad movement as well again. And I'm looking now also because the, the, the part of neuro athletics is now coming up uh, very high in, in Germany, and and I want to think or 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 also learn in this way to be a better coach. How can you solve? this maybe anxiousness in the brain this this how can you find the, the spot where the unconsciousness is in the mind to break up the or break down this movement and re yeah restart the system and this uh, would be an interesting discussion or, or or also an interesting thing to work on if you have any elements your your sister can help uh, <laughs> would, would be nice and if you have time to analyze then make it about andy please and, and tell me what we'll is the, the the special movement the, the will, you know, playstation movement <laughs> yes <laughs> it's funny you brought up the 1v1 because i actually have a clip of andy in the 1v1 right now uh that i will uh i, I will share screen if the i can movement I, to... I mean it's not in the one we want but one we want of course is the most tough task for the keepers to to stay brave and don't uh, turn but bring it the, on the keeper the, 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 this uh, this uh, is this a tough one uh right here so let's kind of break this down right here First off, this is against uh, Union Berlin against Dortmund um, just recently. Uh, you know, uh, pretty pretty solid game here. Um, anyway, so here's, I think it's the play. It's Makoko, I think, mm -hmm. to Sancho. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now it's a, it's, it's a recovery across all the way out. And here mm -hmm. is the stop in the shape. And as that ball is played, it's that drop of that shoulder right there which allows for the spill, but he does have that wonderful recovery movement angled across to cover for that gap um, as quickly as he can and be back in position right there. Um, Michael, th thoughts on how, how, to, how to break this break this down right here? You know, and what do you tell a goalkeeper after this situation here? Um, Omar, you want to explain, uh, explain the, yeah. the situation? To yeah, Omar, the sure. Omar, do you want to do your brilliant, your brilliant breakdown? Yeah, yeah, reset, reset it from the top, Mike, so I can kind of get the full picture. Okay, show. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like, uh, again, coming down the left side, goalkeeper's right side, the ball slipped in, corner of the 18, and the striker is probably still like 17 yards out, uh, pretty far away from the actual goal, and he squares it all the way across to Jaden Sancho on the far post. So now, uh, as we see with uh, Andreas here, he has to, you know, score up to the shot, respect it, and then as that ball goes all the way across the goal, it's still – probably between the PK and the 18. That's how deep it is. So he has to cover the ground all the way across goal. And he shuffles to go back real quick, back back. Okay. So there's one, there's one runner going directly in the middle of the goal and then Jaden Sancho on the far post. So if you see his first movement, it's not an immediate cross step because he sees the first ball here. So he shuffles so he's still square. And then once he realizes that ball is going to the far post, he shifts to a cross step. But as he's coming across the far post, guys, there's still quite a big distance. He goes as quickly as he can, that fast approach, slow arrival, sets his feet. And I mean, that's what we always talk about is get your feet into a good position where now both feet are in the ground and you can still pick them back up and make a kick save or pick up the you know uh, right and left hands to make a save just outside your body. So I just love for me, the fast approach, slow arrival, he gets himself all the way across, but he doesn't run at the striker. He keeps his distance, which one allows him to get set, but also two reaction time. And it gets his defenders uh, recovery time as well without him having to sprint out and make an emergency save. So it was a big time save. He gets set and makes a kick save here. So for me, it was just, I mean, perfect example of how, you, how you're you supposed to textbook for me, play goalkeeper and how I teach it. I also like the fact that, that, that he, he recognized as he went down for that ball, that the ball lifted. So he had time to go and cover that gap rather than have to try to get a, up, up, up for an immediate second ball save. So because of that bounce, now he's got time to set, and now he's in a, in a, in a great position right here uh, as the play. But I think uh, just well, so 
Michael, one thing I was going to add real quick, I think with 1v1s, I think a lot of times um, we, a lot of players specifically, they, they watch these 1v1 situations and they always think about, okay, well, it's, it's me and the striker. Now I have to make a play. And I think if you look at this position, uh, with, with uh, I keep saying Andreas, but you call him Andy. I'll just say Andreas, that's his name on, on Wikipedia. So I'll just say that. Uh, but I feel like he did a really good job. And, and I think young goalkeepers can take a, a note of this is let your defenders do their job. Let them recover. So that it gives the, the forward something to think about. Give them gives them an added layer of, of pressure, not only to beat you and find the angle and find a, a, a way to slot it past you, but now they have to think about, okay, my first touch has to be super clean because I have someone coming behind me. And then them thinking about that first touch, now their thought process about how they beat you is delayed. And now it gives you an extra time, uh, that extra second or two to really problem solve. And now you're playing chess versus playing checkers, I feel. Well, well yeah, one, one thing I want to say, you know, uh, Michael, is, is that one of the things that you, you and Omar have done a really good job of is explain the why. The why things are happening. The why a goalkeeper is doing this. The why a striker is doing this. Why a wide player is doing this, you know. How important is that when you're spe especially speaking with a youth goalkeeper to really break down the why so they understand that it's not just instructions, but it's the thinking aspect of it. And you really need to recognize why things are happening. If, he, if I come back to this situation, it explains so much about principles. And uh, along in, in this situation, the first thing is when the striker on the on the edge of the box and he's a little bit um, too too far off the post again then it makes of course with the cutback pass uh, he has to make one step more uh, and then he is it, it's a tricky situation the striker gets the ball in uh, not in the middle but the the, uh, the second striker in the back post gets the ball and it's a tough situation because he has to make the decision do I, uh, I can, is, is, is one of my defenders able to, to, to help me? What is the distance? Can I make the close the distance to come into a one versus one block or have, uh, I have to stay deep to, to, to make the save with, with a diving save. And uh, it's a tricky situation and he makes the best out of it. And, and the why also, especially why the ball is coming from Andy's foot up so high and not so far is a technical part because Andy's uh, toes are many times too low in the 1-1 one -one situation and then he gets the touch and the ball goes up high instead of maybe a little lower or lower and, and far away. So, so in, in this situation, in this video clip, there are so many principles and so many uh, pictures you can show to the keeper why something happens. And it's not about one save or one goal no 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 it's just to bring all small de uh, all small uh, parts of a puzzle together to, to 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 raise up the probability that you make a save just Michael, yeah. this. Michael, i have a question for you i think uh i think for me too and and there are certain times throughout the season obviously that you're you're trying to make sure the goalkeeper's confidence stays at a certain level and, and they're playing at elite level obviously for everyone to keep their jobs and for you guys to get points but I think, have you ever have you ever had a situation where you may have seen a, a technique that they didn't pay for, like they made a mis they made a mistake, or the technique that you noticed that maybe didn't cost you guys that game, but that you kind of noticed throughout training sessions and throughout other games that maybe that's something that in the future could potentially be a problem. Have you ever kind of just like bit your <laughs> tongue and then let it happen again and then showed them like, look, I didn't say it last time, but this is something that we can potentially affect and really work on. Or is that something that you immediately get like as many clips as you can from training sessions and then you show them like, hey, look, this is something that you're doing. It hasn't cost us yet. Let's, I want you to understand what is happening here so that we can make sure that this never happens to us again or we don't get exposed in the future. Definitely, this could happen every day. And the special move of Andy is something like this. He didn't oh, get punished have to for find it. it. <laughs> uh, and he didn't uh, get punished or just one time half punished for it but uh yeah of, of course there are everyday details and of course it's easier to to talk to a keeper if it happens in the game so i was very happy also that uh, that loris carriers now had his game in the in the in, in the german cup because then we had so much videos beside the the, the daily training daily training 
training you should of of course replicate uh, the, the the situation like in the game but of course it's not the same way strikers make more a chip or something like this also also the goalkeeper behavior sometimes is uh, different but the game is the game and there you have 100 percent the truth what what is going on how is your performance what we can do better and uh this this, this is the best part uh to have game situations to watch the videos and then the goalkeeper also see the importance. Sometimes, if you tell him at the training scout, he doesn't see the importance. Yeah. Sometimes you show him training videos, he maybe say, "Okay," but doesn't see the importance. But on the weekend, when he gets punished for it, next day he he reads it in newspapers, and maybe the specialists don't know if it was correct or not. Anyway, but then he say, "Nah, it was important. It was my mistake." So, mm -hmm. But hope, thought, hopefully, most of the times we we can we can fix it before something happens. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I think it's even, even honestly more difficult with the, at the youth level as well too, because a lot of times a go young goalkeeper will be able to keep getting away with something over and over and over again until they get to a certain level. And maybe you get a kid from the youth academy, and now you you throw him into with the reserves, or you throw him in, or reserve kid, and you throw him in with the first team. And the speed of play is so much higher. The players are so much more skilled. They're much 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 more smarter. And now he's getting beat, and now it's finally dawning on him. Oh, if only I had spent the last four years, now I wouldn't be in this position. The the first the first thing, especially of course for for youth goalkeepers, is way more difficult of course the first thing when I, when i when we make technical exercise it's it's for myself that the goalkeeper should be conscious about the movement he shouldn't judge the movement in the first place he shouldn't say, oh i'm kicking bad oh, i'm kicking yeah that's the result anyway but what's going on in your mind or what's what do you feel throughout the, the the exercise of course it's tough to to say oh I felt very, very uh, explosive in that push or uh, in, in goal defense uh, situation. It's very tough, of course. But you, in, in kicking the ball, in, in making a goal keep, you can feel, ah, okay, w what's going on in my body? And not to judge it. And then you can, you can also find a solution. Okay, maybe we adjust this a little bit, this a little bit, this a little bit. And then how does it feel again? And what is the result? And most of the times then the result will be, whoa. And that's a that's a great thing for the coach then. Dude, I absolutely love that. And Omar, I, I know that's something that with with youth goalkeepers, you know, you've had an issue with in regards to them second guessing themselves because they're judging their movements and having negative thoughts already before before you're even done with the session. Yeah, and I think again, it's it's so tough because I mean, there's so many different mm -hmm. like psychological things that kids are dealing with, and and you don't know you know, what pressure they have from their parents. You don't know what pressure they have from, you know, being hyped up or being seen. Like, I remember, like, my preseason, uh, the year before I was uh, in my high school season, we were I, we had, like, the first seven games were all shutouts. So I remember going into my junior season going, okay, I have to live up to that. I have to be better than the guy I was last year. And then, you know, first game, we conceded three. And I, I kept thinking, why, why did I care so much about that? So I think a lot of kids – as much as we want them to not overthink, I think it's important for them to overthink so that they realize that overthinking is not all it's meant out to be. It's only going to hurt you. So I think it's, 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 a, it's that nature versus nurture, that balancing act of how much do we actually, uh, not force feed, but how much do we expose them and then let them learn and how much do we expose them to things and then we teach them. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. No, that, that 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 makes sort of sort of sense to me. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what I'm trying it to makes, say. It's it like makes, how, how, well, many times, how many times do they have bad sessions and then we put we put our arm around them versus they have a bad session or they have bad technique and we just let them, hey, here's the footage. You go figure it out. You tell me what you see versus like how you always tell me, Mike, is like these kids need to learn how to break things down on their own versus you always trying to break it down for them. So now they don't really have any other voice but my voice instead of having their own voice to really – filter and supplement that see see now now that makes a lot more sense thank okay, you for okay. clarifying. <laughs> yeah. go ahead mike go ahead michael a, a funny story to this because um from every half season or maybe all three months i make a a conversation with the with the goalkeepers first i make a rating of the goalkeepers in special aspects uh and the, i give the paper to the goalkeepers they have to do it as well uh, they have to rate them they have to say okay this is good about myself uh, and this i want to improve 
And I, I really realized that, that if a goalkeeper is working, as long as he's working with myself and, and even now with, with Andy after a couple of months, because we had a lot of discussions and we had a lot of, of course, discussions in the preseason. And he was coming back with the paper and also the youth, uh, the, our third keeper, a young keeper uh, I'm working for four years now, was coming to me. And we looked at the pa uh, paper and all the first three aspects of the goal defense and uh, the offensive game were the same in different words, but the same aspects. And this is what, what I say, okay, two possibilities about this. One, uh, the goalkeeper sees it really like it is, or second one, I'm I'm going to his nerve every day with the same principles, and now he believes it. So, but but in any kind, it it was very interesting to myself that the goalkeeper analyzed himself uh, almost the same way I would rate him, and and, and I see it as a good uh, thing that the connection is giving, and that's the mm -hmm. as, as Omar said that the, the the last target that I'm. I wouldn't say useless, but the goalkeeper himself can coach himself in the in the in in, in, in every aspect of the game. If there is the, the shooting exercise and he gets he concedes the goal, how many times the goalkeeper uh, turns to myself and say, "Yeah, my position is that," and I just have to say, "Yeah, I see it the same way." And and yeah. and this is the the good thing because I'm not, of course, it, it's a small group, and I want to be individual as uh, as as far as possible with everyone. But I can't control him. I can't watch him at the same time. It's not possible. And if he knows what is necessary to have a good game, of course, it it makes himself in first line better. And otherwise, uh, and, and and the second part is it also supports my work. To, to support him. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Michael, I think there's a really good point you brought up right there in regards to with them giving the same type of report back is because I, I know with youth goalkeepers myself, one of the things I want to make sure is that they're being honest. And, and like you were saying, there's either a couple things. One is either I'm just going to give them back what he wants to hear because he keeps telling it to me over and over again. Or two is that they truly, really believe that. And I... One thing I've tried to do with IDPs with, with, with young goalkeepers is tell them, don't think about me and what I say to you. Pretend as if I, I'm, I haven't been coaching you. Tell me what you really think about yourself, you know, and with no judgment. And I think that's mm -hmm. the hardest thing because, you know, go, young goalkeepers want to impress you, um, mm -hmm. you know, and they want you to, they, they don't want you to think that they're, they're worse you know, all they, they, their own insecurities and everything like that, you know? So how do we, how do we make sure that they're being honest with themselves? In, you, the, of course, it's a, that's, that's totally true. And sometimes even the player doesn't recognize that he wants to do it for, for myself. So, uh, and as older the, the players are, they are more honest to themselves, I believe. And, and you can tell more the truth. But the, the thing is also in coaching to give him advices to improve them, to, to, to make clear, hey, this is not good what you do in this case. But always to give him also the feeling, I don't judge you as a person for this. And if this is given, I think, and, and this is also my experience that they, of course, from type to type different, but most of the keepers came up with a, way more harder judgment than I would do. If you give him the trust to be honest and, and say, hey, I make mistakes, you make mistakes. It's not about this. It's only what happened, what have you done, what can you do better? Something like this With, without, of course, as, as good as possible without emotions and without, uh, without yeah, uh, being yeah, emotional. But, but bringing in emotions, is a good thing with positive things. Not too much, not always. Yeah, very good job, very good job, very good job. And I, I know myself also on the pitch that maybe sometimes I'm too much with these emotions. And yeah, good, 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 good. And then I reflect, no, this was not good. What, what I'm saying, this was not good. <laughs> Shut up, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and not to be too positive, but emotions, if it's positive, let it out. And if it's negative criticism, 
let it be, more or less. I think that's, I think that's, that's a good point. Omar, were you about yeah. to say something? No, no, I think everything, it just honestly gives me peace of mind knowing that goalkeeper coaches at your level go through the same exact things that goalkeeper coaches that, that here in California myself go through. So it's definitely, it, gives me, it does give me peace of mind knowing that as much as we're trying to help process and help, you know, uh, push forward our goalkeepers that us as well, we're going through constant development on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have to almost revisit those conversations in our own head and, and kind of, like I said earlier, revisit and, and allow ourselves to talk ourselves through it. And then the next day, which I love, that's why I love coaching is that the next day comes and you can apply those exact uh, lessons and teachings to yourself on the next, uh, the next session. So yeah, this, that's all I wanted to say. You know, and, my, it's, and Michael, it's, it's, go ahead. it's all about this. It's, it's all about this because, and, and oh my, I have this also every day. So many thoughts popping out in my, uh, popping up in my mind to, to, I can do improve this and I can do improve this. And it's a constant improvement of everything, of, of everything. It's a constant improvement. Yeah. And I really like, you see, I really like also the conversation about this. And this is why I'm loving this as my job. And, and normally I, I wouldn't say it's a job. It's it's really my passion to, to be a coach. And I would say I'm very happy with my career. Uh, I played in, 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 in great countries. I made also three caps for the Austrian national team. But mm. I'm, I'm, I'm a better coach as a player as well. It's more inside myself to, to be a coach than, than a player. And, and uh, I'd like the exchange with, with you to, to meet you guys. And uh, because you're fascinated as well about the sport. And, and that yeah. if you have this constant movement, sometimes it makes you crazy in the mind. But on the other <laughs> hand, it's, it, it's our life. And then do, uh, we can create uh, good stuff with it. Well, I mean, look, Absolutely. Michael. I mean, you know, and I know we've been going for a while here, and it's starting starting to get late there. And you know, you guys have you guys have a game Friday? Is it Friday or Saturday? You guys play Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Wolfsburg against oh, my friend Pascal. Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw that, and I was like, I don't know. Who, I, I don't know who to root for. I don't know who to root for in that, in, in, in oh, that uh, game. Omar has his uh, has his club already. I see. <laughs> I do, yeah. I've already chosen. <laughs> oh, Thank you, Omar. Oh boy. Oh, of course, boy. of course. No, but I, I was going to say, you know, Michael. I mean, obviously, you know, one of the things that's very humbling for us is when, when you, you know, even you just mentioned you're like, eh, and a couple episodes ago when you guys were talking about this, you know, when when we hear people of at your level, you know, who are listening to this and and, and educating themselves still constantly, not not that we know anything or or whatever, but maybe we have good guests on, is it, it really showcases to younger goalkeeper coaches that you need to keep learning from all different platforms that are out there and, and avenues that are available to you. And, and I know, I know the DFB does a lot of goalkeeper education, uh, you know, you, you know, out there. Um, are there any certain resources that you would recommend for younger goalkeeper coaches to, to, to check out? Yeah, to be honest, no, everything. If you are a younger goalkeeper coach, it has to be inside you that you want to to improve, and it's okay. it, it's not special for for goalkeeper coaches. It's for for everybody in his job. If he loves to do the job, he finds his way to 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 improve. And and uh, yes, I I also use Instagram. Uh, of of course, stay connected with fans and and give a little bit from from my personal feelings uh, out to the world to spread the thing. But also, I, I like to, to to look around and, and see on pages, and there are very good, yeah, inputs for myself for the training, for ex if it's our exercises or or um, mental stuff or anything. So so I I really like it. The most important thing is not to believe that oh I see this uh, exercise on YouTube and this is a good exercise and you do it uh, just because you do it. No no no, you have to think uh, what do I want to achieve in the exercise and, and, and for what is it good for and what and this is the most tricky question and, and uh, most of the times and I can't answer this because if there is an, an exercise let's say now from Omar on internet or on Instagram and I see this exercise I can see okay this is maybe uh, this is a one one situation he wants to train this but I don't know exactly what he wants to achieve. Is, is it the positioning? If it, what, what is his thinking about technique? What is his uh, thinking about uh, um, the technical aspect? So it's 
important to to not to do the exercise on Instagram because it's a good exercise, you believe. No, you have to understand what you personally want to achieve. And then you can adapt this exercise uh, in this form. And this is also one thing I learned. Never judge now, just you see something and never judge in the right moment uh, what this exercise is good for. Because uh, there was an example, uh, I had a conversation with another goalkeeper coach and he made an exercise and he said, uh, Michael, when, when I did this exercise, it was, it was in the end of the practice and it made no sense for, for, for anybody who understands goalkeeping. It makes no sense because it was a totally different topic. It was uh, not something special, but it was, the, in, if everybody wanted to judge me, he would say, hey, why is he doing this? But I was doing this because the goalkeeper for a bonus, he made a good training session and said, hey, you can choose one, uh, sesh, uh, one, one last uh, exercise and we will do it. So everything, that, that's the most important thing. Everything has to make sense for yourself. And that, then it's a good exercise. No matter how yeah. you, 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 you train or maybe sometimes la la last couple of weeks I was using uh, balloons, air balloons. Oh, I want to see! I want to see that session. Please show us. No, 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 no. It, it, it was just to get a, a little bit of, of a feeling how a balloon is. Yeah, it made sense because I was combining it with with uh, with a medicine ball, with with, with a heavier ball. It was uh, related with a small ball to get a cognitive aspect to to have the differentiation. So, but if you if somebody is out there uh, and says hey, training in Bundesliga and with balloons, huh? why? <laughs> so. This, yeah. this, this is the thing, but I also use uh, Instagram as inspiration. Why not? Why not? But I, I then adjust it to what I want to to train with the goalkeepers and I, I adjust. And the most funny thing is I also think that I'm not creative, but since uh, four years now, I make n not only one training is different and I'm still scared not to be creative enough. And and, and that's a funny thing as well. So you, you can overthink sometimes yeah Dude, you use you use balloons there's you're you're as creative as can be that's <laughs> omar you have to if, if michael will allow you i think you have to put that on your channel that that sounds like a pretty <laughs> pretty but in context with context yeah then, you have to uh, totally explain to people why why uh why you're using that well well michael th thanks for taking all the all the time man i mean um Best of luck. I hope there's a draw this weekend against Wolfsburg. I hope you guys are both in that top four uh, <laughs> position. Uh, Make a decision. <laughs> Make a decision, Michael. Um, but if, uh, if people want to connect with you, where where's the best place? Is it is it Instagram? Instagram, yeah. Okay. Okay. And what what's your handle? What's that? What's uh what's 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 the handle? The at. Uh, M point uh, dot explaining like my name so okay. if you put in explaining then it's such a diff uh, difficult name if you put it correctly <laughs> into it then, then you find me <laughs> it, it's it'll it'll most likely come up to you guys and it's also one of the best profile pictures ever with the hands coming out like that i absolutely love love that shot in a stylish shirt as well too yep that right there that's the one right there um <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys. And obviously, you know, if you want to check out, you know, Omar Zini's, uh, you know, uh, content in context with context and understand why he's doing the breakdowns uh, that, that he's doing, go to pre pro GK Academy underscore guys uh, at goalkeeper podcast on all social media platforms. If you have a guest suggestion or a topic suggestion, contact at inside the 18, that's the number 18 media.com. Uh, Michael, honestly, this has been this has been a lot of fun, man. We, we, we're, we're definitely going to have to have you back. And, uh, and once, once, uh, once the world returns to normal, we'd even told Pascal, we have to make a trip to Germany. We, uh, Omar, Omar's got a backpack ready to go. He's, he's got his cameras ready to go and a backpack to, <laughs> I to do. film, film right. every session right. he can find. Um, all right, guys, that's all the time on Inside the 18, and we are out. Later, guys. Yeah. Yeah.